Hi, this is Joe and welcome back to the shop. This week we're going to take a look at the Harbor Freight 1 inch by 30 inch belt sander. Comes with an adjustable table for the belt. It also comes with a 5 inch disc with an adjustable table. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, how to adjust it, how to change belts, some of the issues uh, with the uh, belt sander. Uh, I primarily uh, bought this to grind the high speed uh, steel lathe tooling as well as uh, tungsten electrodes. I uh, put some dicum on the, uh, the main table so I can check the angles. To adjust the table, you loosen the pinch bolt and then you can uh, change the angle of the table. Uh, I use that for setting up the appropriate angle when I'm grinding uh, high-speed steel uh, tool bits. Uh, I put dicum on the uh, surface so uh, I can get an accurate estimation on, uh, on my angles. Uh, you use compound angles when you're grinding. Uh, sanding belts I pick up from Harbor Freight. Uh, they're very inexpensive. Um, I use 80 grit, uh, 120 grit. Uh, for tungsten electrode grinding, I use uh, 80 grit. Uh, the belts are rather inexpensive and they last a fairly long time. One of the modifications I did was to take an inch and a quarter PVC coupler and I put it on my lathe and bore out the uh, inside uh, so I can then fit that uh, coupler to my uh, vacuum cleaner exhaust and on the side of the uh, the uh, belt sander I can then connect that. Uh, this is really good for when you're uh, uh, grinding thoriated tungsten uh, electrodes. Uh, you don't want to breathe any of that dust so it sucks it right down into the uh, vacuum. On the external belt sander there's three adjustments. You have the two table adjustment and then you have a belt centering adjustment. So right on the back, you can adjust that. Uh, I'll turn it on here, and means you can adjust and center the uh, one-inch belt across the rollers. So uh, it works there. It doesn't work really well. Uh, then what you can do is uh, then on the inside, uh, of the behind the back cover, there's the tensioner for the belt. Uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to uh, pull the cover off and show you how to uh, change the belt. I reposition the camera here. And uh, now what we're going to do is you need two 17 millimeter uh, wrenches and a cross point screwdriver. So what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, use the wrenches, uh, we'll pull the cover off, and uh, we'll show you how to replace the belt. There's a thumb screw up at the top. Uh, you loosen that thumb screw, which will loosen the, uh, the cover plate so you can get at the uh, tensioner and the belt. And there's two pins at the very bottom, so you just tilt the uh, cover down, pop that off, and uh, then what we do right at the very top on the plastic, clear plastic cover, there is a single cross point screw. You can loosen that and then pop off the plastic cover. Now you have access to uh, all of the rollers and the belt. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we'll get our uh, wrenches and we'll loosen the tensioner. And uh, there's just a single tensioner. Uh, you can loosen that and then the belt pivots on that back or third roller. So uh, we'll uh, then pull the belt off. You have to pull the belt through the table. This belt is pretty well shot. So I'm going to get a new belt, and uh, we'll show you how to mount that belt on. Uh, we start out by feeding uh, the belt through the table. But uh, one thing I want to uh, remind you of is there is an arrow on the belt, and uh, there's also an arrow on the back of the, uh, the belt sander. You want to make sure the arrows are both going in the same direction. Uh, so we'll feed the uh, belt through the table and then onto the two front rollers uh, and then we can uh, reach behind and uh, move that tensioner to slip on the belt uh, and make sure all uh, three rollers uh, or that the belt is on all three rollers. Then I can move with my left hand there, that tensioner back and forth. Um, it's spring-loaded, so what you can do is uh, you can, as I'm saying, I'm just testing the belt there, uh, you can take uh, your wrenches and the tension of the uh, tension of the spring should hold that uh, belt in a pretty close position so that you can then tighten uh, the uh, tensioner nut. And uh, once I get that uh, tightened, then I'll uh, spin the belt and make sure, uh, again, all three rollers are lined up with the belt. Uh, and then we can, uh, we can reassemble the, uh, the cover, and then we can uh, test out that, uh, 
test out that belt to make sure it's uh, working okay. Right before you put the cover back on, you want to really make sure that your belt tension is adjusted properly. Uh, you don't want it too loose, but you don't want it too tight either. So take the cover, slip the two tabs at the very bottom in, and pop it up over the thumb screw hole. Get your thumb screw and uh, tighten that back up. Uh, then what we'll do is uh, we'll get the uh, plastic uh, protector, uh, if I can get that thing feeded on here properly. Uh, we'll get the plastic protector, and uh, I left the screw uh, loose. I didn't remove it completely. We'll just pop that uh, protector back on and get the screwdriver and tighten up that, uh, tighten up that screw to hold that protector in place. Once we get the uh, cover back on and tightened up, I can then turn on the uh, sander and I can uh, do the, uh, the, uh, the belt adjuster to make sure my belt is centered. It doesn't work that well. Uh, you only have a teeny bit of movement, but uh, you, know, you can do that. Primarily though now, recently I've been using uh, the bell sander to uh, grind my tungsten. What I do is I get a drill and I mount the tungsten electrode into my drill. Um, and then I turn on the uh, belt sander, and then at, at this point I can turn on the drill. And uh, you never want to grind the tungsten uh, sideways. You always want to keep the tungsten uh, in parallel with the belt. And notice the sparks are fly, uh, flying off the tungsten down into the uh, belt sander. Uh, by turning, by using the drill, you can get an even grind on your tungsten. Uh, again, you don't want to grind sideways. What I do then is once I'm done. I wipe off the uh, tungsten, uh, I get a piece of uh, Scotch-Brite and clean off the, uh, the tip of the tungsten, any, any dust, and polish any uh, crud that was uh, left over higher up on the electrode uh, from previous uh, TIG welding. One thing you want to make sure that you do is if you are uh, grinding your own tungsten, uh, make sure you use a dedicated belt. You do not want to contaminate your uh, tungsten. So let's say, for example, if I'm grinding high-speed steel, I want to change that belt. I only want to use one belt per uh, tungsten. Do not want to mix those. You will contaminate your tungsten. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, video. I really enjoy the, uh, the belt sander. And uh, thanks for watching, and check back uh, from time to time. I will be putting out more videos. Uh, it was a great buy, $50 with a 20% coupon, and I think it's uh, well worth the money. So thanks a lot. Check back uh, frequently, and uh, we'll see you later.